Hello again and welcome to the priest video. This time I'll talk about beating priests in duels and world PvP. Now there are two situations where you'll encounter priests. The first is 1v1 versus a shadow priest. This is what I'll talk about most since uh, priests are considered a hard counter to rest of duels. The second is holy or disc priests as a support in 1vx situations. 1v1 I tend to avoid healers in general since they take ages to kill. And if you try, there's likely going to be someone, either Horde or Alliance, joining in on the fight eventually. So I think talking about stopping healing priests in 1vx makes more sense. Let's start off with Shadow Priests. So why are priests considered a hard counter? To find out, we need to think about what we want to do, and what the priest can do to us. Let's first look at what the Druid game plan is without thinking about the priest's abilities. Against a normal opponent, you want to cast dots to grind them down, and use your hots to survive their damage. If you need to play mana efficient, you want to deal damage in cat or bear form. Now let's think about what the priest can do to counter us. The priest has offensive and defensive magic dispel, a 26 to 30 second cooldown fear, instant shield, heals as both hard casts and hots. High burst, a magic dot, a curse which heals the priest when they deal damage to you, a silence, mana burn, and a slow that also deals damage. In addition to this, they also have their priest ratios. Devouring Plague is super strong against you. It's a second dot that druids can't dispel since it's a disease, and it also heals the priest. Shadow Guide can let them kite you in cat farm by having blackout proc when you're hitting them. Feedback drains your mana, although it's a weak ability most priests avoid using. It's a 15 second buff that drains mana when you're casting a direct damage spell into them, like Wrath, Starfire, or Moonfire. Insect Storm does not trigger a feedback proc. Because of the cost, it's only really worth using when the opponent casts 4 or 5 spells into the feedback, which is really easy to avoid doing. The Spirit Prayer is a free heal, which makes them extra hard to bring down if both of you are um. These are the relevant ones at least. There are a few others, but they don't bring much to the matchup. Fairward does nothing against the Druid. Elun's Grace gives them dodge for a slightly higher chance to avoid bash. Star Charge has longer range than Mind Play, but will only typically be used if you turn a corner or the priest is counterspelled. Then there are two curses, one which reduces damage done and the other reduces your healing done by 20%. This can be annoying, but they're decursible as a druid. Beware that the rank 1 hex still reduces healing by 20% and costs less mana than your decurse. So it's a way for the priest to bait you into dispelling too much and get you um. It's easy to see how priest counters the general game plan of rest of druids. Their dispels shut down both your damage and self-sustain. Druids have poor ways to deal with the fear. Their heals and shield make them impossible to burst down and their damage can be deadly if you're caught in a silence and fair chain. At first glance, it might seem like an impossible matchup, but they have one weakness, and that's their mana pool. Dealing damage as a priest is expensive, shielding is expensive, and dispelling is expensive. If you outlast them till the priest is um, you can start popping off with dots, hearts, and your inner right without worrying about getting dispelled. Cast rank 1 burst and use snug and to protect your inner right. They might use their last bit of mana to spelling you, so reduce the chance this happened, and you should have an easy win from there. You can also cat form at that point to be even more mana efficient if you need to, but save your drink kit for this if you can, uh, as getting fair lets them reset and drink for mana. Now to outlast the priest, there are several things we can do. Healing touch is your main ability for this fight. Spam rank 3 or 4 healing touches when they push damage. At some point, the priest will stop damaging you and one, or be forced to move after you when you're running away. This is a good time to cast rank 1 spells on yourself and the priest to pay the spells. Rank 1 Moonfire plus Insect Swarm, and even Fairy Fire if you'd like, is good until they catch on to it. The only time you don't want to cast rank 1 Moonfire is when a priest uses feedback, but that's generally a bad spell for them to use anyway, so you don't really need to think about it that much. Even better than rank 1 dots are rank 1 reduce, as it's less obvious that they are rank 1. Keeping the priest busy with dispelling is very good for getting them in faster. Once they catch on to it, you can start using max rank spells because they will typically stop dispelling at that point. Uh, at least reduce and insect swarm, while keeping moonfire rank 1 to make them think you're still casting low ranks. 
This is a mind game you'll have to judge based on each priest you're fighting. Some priests don't dispel at all, while others dispel absolutely everything. When they're dealing damage to you, it's important to think about when they want to silence you and how to counter it. They will typically cast it after a mind blast when you're around 50% HP. It has a 45 second cooldown and only lasts for 5 seconds, but does not stop you from shape shifting. The best way to beat silence is to reflect it completely, but you can also just save the reflector for when the silence hits you to stop incoming mind blast or mind flay burst. If you don't have a reflector, or used it earlier to reflect a mana burn, which is the best spell to reflect back to the priest, you can shapeshift and bash or charge the priest to stop their damage. Alternately, if you're far at range, you can travel form and dodge the mind blast or mind flay by outranging it. Mind flay is a 24 yard spell, so it's easy to outrange. When the silence is over, they will likely try to move in for a fair to break your next heals. Stay at range and use short cast time healing touches when this happens. You will also probably be low HP, and might want to NS yourself following the silence. It's crucial that you wait for the previous global cooldown to end before you cast NS. If you do not wait, you will end up buffing yourself with NS, then risk having it dispelled for the remainder of the GCD. If you wait until the GCD is over, however, Healing Touch will be cast instantly together with the NS, assuming you have the macro together. The best priests you face will manage your mana well and never go um. They will grind you down with one and shadow word pain and finish you off with a mind blast, giving the opportunity. If they choose to play this way instead of going fully into your face with damage, neither of you will likely kill the other. Just beware that the priest probably knows how to manage your mana well if they're running you a lot. It's a good indicator to look for when you want to find out whether they're a good player or not. Priests have a very low mobility and cannot deal damage to you past shadow word pain while they're moving but they might spam rank 1 for blackout procs. Just make sure you abuse travel form and go really far from them to get your heals going. Now let's talk about fighting priests 1vx. If you're fighting someone else and a priest joins in, it's gonna be very very hard for you to control that fight. The priest is unburstable for a druid, and if you're trying to root rocket town, sleep someone else, they will just dispel it. If you need to deal with a priest joining in, it's best to use any hard CT you have on them while you try to kill the other player. Racket Helm is strongest, Magic Dust only works when they're not undead, and Feral Charge and Tidal Charm are good for interrupting them as well. Keep in mind having a healer join when you're fighting is one of the weaknesses of a druid. You can deal with multiple damaging class as well, but having to stop a healer can be very tough. You need trinkets and items to deal with them. The only exception is Shaman and Druid, which can be hibernated. Against the priest, you want to open from stealth with a pounce into a rake and rip, and then move out of range from the fair. The optimal way to do this is pouncing right before your next energy tick. You should have an add-on that tracks when this happens. If you don't have brutal impact, you risk getting feared before getting your rip off, so consider using rip instead of rake, and then start moving out of range. If the priest is sitting, you can use ravage for a guaranteed crit. After having moved out of range from the fair, you want to hot yourself with rank 1 Reju and dot the priest with rank 1 Windfire and Insect Swarm. Often the priest will start casting damaging spells at you after dispelling the first Reju, so following up with a max rank Reju can sometimes give you a slight self-sustain to last through the initial burst. Again, it depends on the priest and how much they dispel. Some priests like to just go full out with damage instead of wasting GCDs dispelling your best. Opening from range is also not the worst against priests. Since they have a passive 15% stun resist in PvP spec, pounds can sometimes fail and put you in a bad spot. Simply dotting them up with rank 1 spells from range can be safer than doing a cat form opener. Opening from range is especially good in world PvP because you can kite them infinitely. Good items for you to use against the Shadow Priest are Shadow Reflector, Tidal Charm, Shard of the Scale, Darkman Card Blue Dragon, Barrow Peasant Caller, Arena Grandmaster, No Mission Automatic Projector, Glimmering Mithril Insignia, Goblin Martyr, Ancient Cornerstone Grimoire, Rocket Helm, Rocket Boots, and a Shadow Resist set. Since priests have such low mobility, it's easy to travel form out of range and change your set with an Outfitter add-on. The pieces I would use in an SR set is Tier 1 Boots, Legs and Shoulders, Tier 2 Helm, Gloves and Belt, Interlaced Shadow Jerkin, Shadow Reflector, and Amulet of Shadow Shielding. Carrying around a shadow set at all times might feel like a chore, but most of these pieces actually have more than one purpose. You need to carry around 3 pieces tier 1 for 15 minute thorns buff, 
and 3 pieces tier 2 is good for farming set when you want to kill mobs. If you don't want to commit fully into shadow resist gear, you can leave shadow jerkin and amulet of shielding behind. I personally like carrying around as many useful items as I can because I play the game mainly to PvP. Obviously, if I need extra space for gold farming or raiding, I will leave them in my bank. It's also smart to not wear too many pure SR pieces like the Stygian set. Sure, they help make the matchup better, but if someone who isn't a warlock or priest joins in on the fight, you'll die very easily. The tier pieces are great because they are good pieces to wear versus any other class as well. They have a lot of stamina and intellect in addition to the shadow resist, which will allow you to fight off more enemies than just the shadow priest without going in. I tend to aim for about 100 to 150 SR. Anything above that makes you too weak to other classes, or just wanding or smiting from the priest. Fair bog medicine pouch is not as useful against priests because it's a magic buff and can be dispelled. Arvina Grandmaster is magic as well, but if you use it right before a mind blast hits, you can guarantee full value from it. Ancient Cornerstone Grimmar can be shackled by the priest, but if you use it when they try to burst you, it can be an annoyance to deal with and give you some extra time to heal up or get to safety. Good items for a priest to use against you are Feral Charm, Rocket Helm, Rocket Boots, Nifty Stopwatch, Shard of the Scale, Document Card Blue Dragon, Borrow Peasant Color, Goblin Mortar, Ancient Cornerstone Grimmar, Arena Grandmaster, PvP Insignia, or any damage boosting trinket like Hero Charm, Toeb, or Neftier. Now, I'm no expert on Shadow Priest, so I asked the former guild member who's really good at PvP how he would build his talents. And they would look a little something like this. The interesting talents here are Unbreakable Will, which gives the priest a 15% stun resistance. That's relevant for your bash or your pounce. Another interesting thing is Martyrdom as well as Healing Focus. Together they make it hard to push back the priest if he's casting a heal. Against this priest I would prefer to be in 19, 11, 21. Having Feral Charge is nice to interrupt their Mind Blast when you're silenced, and you don't need the additional damage from Nature's Grace or Mid Fury. Swiftman isn't as good either, because you'll be forced to Swiftman immediately after applying the Rejuve, with the risk of it just getting dispelled. It also takes up 2 GCD, so it's not really much faster than just casting a Healing Touch, which you'll find time to it in this matchup. Reflection and Nature's Focus is better than Imp and Rage here, because one pushback can be really brutal sometimes. It's also worth mentioning two raid specs that are surprisingly good against priests, namely Moonglow and Regrowth spec. Their mana efficiency and burst heal can counter his priest really well, and you'll often find yourself in one of the two specs if your guild is progressing fresh raid content. As I was making this video and leveling in Classic, I encountered a bug which allows priests to mana burn druids in farm. The way this works is that mana burn will hit you if the spell was cast prior to you shapeshifting. This means that you can't shift into a form in the middle of a mana burn cast to stop it from going through. This bug gives priests a huge advantage against druids, as they can simply mana burn us to death. However, I've also noticed that the resistance is way stronger in classic than on private servers, and since mana burn is an expensive spell on its own, a partial resist can be good enough to stop the advantage from mana burns. The best way to play around mana burns now is just travel form and run out of range from it. Or go cat form if you know they have used fear already. It is a bug however, which hopefully will be fixed soon. Alright, that's it. You should be able to reliably contest shadow priests now. If you think I missed anything, please say so in the comments, and I'll make a note of it in the description. Remember to check the description as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.